What's up, Trekkies? Hi, so we've got a lot of interesting news. Something good for console, i.e. you guys are getting your 8th anniversary here pretty soon. There isn't actually much other knowledge for that. Uh, you guys can now put aquariums in your colony, so yay, dilithium sink. Got mad at my fleet when we had this one on PC because I'm sitting here, we had like the t the level three upgrade to the entire colony sitting there with needing dilithium still, and then the aquariums came in and somebody finished off the aquariums and I was like, you do realize you could have put 167,000 dilithium into the actual colony upgrade, but thanks, let me go down to the colony and stare at digital fish. Anyways, that's, that's in the past though. Um, but do take that into account. If you're gonna spend that much ever-loving dilithium on something, put it towards something that's possibly an upgrade. If all you're doing is leveling red, yellow, and blue, and you don't actually have an actual colony physical upgrade you're doing, sure, go ahead and put your dilithium in the other one. The other ones can wait, but see what I mean? I'm just gonna put this here uh, because you guys are getting your featured episode and anniversary content. Sorry, last week, I'll make sure to put the card up there talking about how and all that jazz with Omega molecules. If you've done the stuff on the colony, it's mixing drinks. It's gathering the stuff. It's the little one that has four lines and not a did any It's whack-a-mole guitar hero sort of thing. Now it's a red, a yellow, and a blue that go to one silver. Three silver to a shard, sliver to a shard, three shards to a fragment, three fragments to an actual upgrade. As you progress through getting more omega molecules, you'll have zero omega molecules, you'll get one color, whichever one you happen to be doing. You get another one, two, three, and then you get a sliver, and then one, two, and that's the most I've seen. I don't fret too much because you can randomly proc a shard proc. You can randomly get a shard or a fragment even out of doing nothing. Like one time this thing bugged out and I got zero points. I got a yellow and a fragment. But if you want to know all that stuff, there's a card that goes to that video. So what else is happening? You guys think, oh, the featured episode, Sila and Sherbd, Charb just, mm, don't have enough time. The Discovery Locks box is coming in. The featured episode's quite nice. Be prepared for some ground. Uh, so if your ground is a little lacking, uh, maybe not go up in higher difficulty. Uh, the Discovery Lock box is coming in. You know, we can go over that next week a little bit more because this stuff's coming out March 6th, which will be in two Tuesdays, so two weeks from now. We can go over that even on March 6th. The Bajoran Interceptor will come from the anniversary event, so you guys will have like till through April for that. Just do Omega Molecules. Really all that thing is, just do each of the three areas. The Omega Molecule thing, which you can go to Q or you can access the side, I'm not sure if you guys have that on console, but you access the, the menu and here's the feature thing and you go to the 8th anniversary, hail Q, pick up your Omega Molecule daily and then go to the spot, scan whatever color is there, if it's space or ground, like Wolf 359 space, go up, scan it, boom, don't even have to get any points, boom, you got it. Because if you don't care about grinding up all these things and you just want to get your ship, just go to the area, scan something, get, you don't even have to have points, but you just ex escape out of that, not escape, However, X out of it. You just stop doing what you're doing, move on. Uh, and then just go to the three areas. Once you get all three of those, cool, good to go. You don't have to hand anything in. You just have to do it. So I'm gonna show you guys here. Uh, I'm down on Dyson Ground. It's another thing that I was gonna show you guys. So this is random BS gear. This is just, a, I, I got this on, on ground. So something you can, something that's coming in is re-engineering. Re-engineering, for instance, like let's say I have a Tetrion Assault Minigun Mark 10. I can choose to discard that, I can re-engineer the item, or I can salvage the item. So I got a couple pieces of gear here, so we'll, we'll show what that is. So we have the Plasma Blast Assault Minigun. Discard. Boom. 2,000 energy credits for that. Cool. You need energy credits? Vendor. Vendor trash, basically. And you got the assault minigun. Salvage item. Do you want to salvage this item? 
hydrazine gas, magnesite, Z particle, thoron particle, and 80 salvage. The higher quality of the item, the more salvage you get out of it. So, salvage personal shields, 61 salvage. Salvage recoil compensating armor, you get that stuff. So, what do you do? Because I've, I've salvaged a bunch of stuff to get enough stuff. So what is this? So you've got, what? A phaser split beam rifle Mark 11. Crit D, knockback. We want to re-engineer because you don't give a crap about knockback. You don't care at all. You don't want to knock things back. So you unlock it and it says 800 dilithium, 400 salvage. Notice here on the left, I have 74,000 dilithium and 7,000 salvage. Like, if you just have an inventory full of stuff and you plan on maybe re-engineering in the future, just salvage a bunch of stuff, you'll get enough salvage um, to lightly re-engineer things. If you're into heavy re-engineering, you're gonna need a bit. So what happens is you unlock, unlock. Now, notice how it went from 800 to 1440. That's not double. But the salvage cost did double. Uh, this has currently two on it, so, but we all like crit D. So we're gonna leave that one alone for now. But we don't wanna knock back. So the options are, current power says KB3, knockback. Potential powers, more crit D, crit H, damage, dot, which dot three is just, it's, it's a dot. Just like knockback three is knockback. So what you do is you hit randomize and it randomized to damage. Let's say it ran randomized to dot, and you're like, I don't want dot. You hit randomize again. You spend another 800 dilithium and 400 salvage, and it'll do that exact same thing. So, lock it. Cool, good to go. You just re-engineered something. I am going to trash this thing, because I don't really care, but I have the stuff. So now you can see that it has crit D and damage, but no knockback. Benefit. All three you can tweak with certain control. pieces of gear. Excellent things you can't, so I'm just gonna, so salvage this item. I got a heck of a lot more. I got 159 salvage, some hydrazine gas magnesite because it was blue. You can imagine finding something that like epic. Not epic. I say epic because in World of Warcraft everything purple is epic. Whatever is like very rare or even ultra rare stuff, you're, it'll explode on you. So you cannot do, you cannot this all the consumables and you cannot do anything with tribbles. Um, quest gear you cannot do anything with. So, like with your ground gear, you can not re-engineer your kits, can't even re-engineer your modules. This is quest gear, temporal defense initiative, you can't re-engineer that. You can't re-engineer this because it's still, re it's reputation gear. Again, reputation gear. Advanced Temporal Defense, Chronoton, Temporal Defense, Temporal Defense. So there's not a lot you can actually do, but random stuff you pick up, yeah, can be. On your ship, um, I can re-engine, must be in my inventory. So I can re-engineer my Ox Dual Heavy Phaser Cannons, which I did to take a crit D off of them or something like that. As you can see with like something that has a lot of modifiers, re-engineer. It's got a big thing. Unlock, 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 unlock. 2400 dilithium, 2000 salvage. Every time I want to roll, re-roll all four, all five of these, but I don't care. I like accuracy and I like damage. So I'm just gonna leave these the way they are. But you can see is it's not 4,000 dilithium, it's 2,400. So it's to do one, it's 800, 1440, 1920, 2240, 2400. Like you get less, but you have a bigger chance of like messing things up. But the great thing is, is you can look here, I have an accuracy damage and I have all the potential ideas of what it can be. Same thing with other things. But again, I don't really care. Quest gear, quantum phase torpedo, can't re-engineer it. Temporal defense gear, again, reputation gear, can't re-engineer it. My secondary deflector can, because I bought it from the science lab. Can't do my warp core, 
Can't do my shields. Omnidirectional chronic, chronometric polarized beam array. Quest reward from a featured episode. Can't do that. Cranium torpedo. Quest reward. Can't do that. Omnidirectional phaser beam array. Can do that. So we put that in the inventory. We look at re engineer. You can't take away the arc to make it 360 degrees. But you can, you know, tweak with everything else. So, my choices here, accuracy damage, accuracy crit D, accuracy crit H, crit D damage, crit D H, or crit, yeah, crit H D, hit and D, hit and damage, da damage and damage. That makes sense? Whatever. You see what those are, they're on your screen. Um, so technically you can just consistently reroll things so you could have damage, 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 and then accuracy damage or crit D and damage. And that'll give you the most damage out of, you know, an Omni Phaser Beam Array. Um, consoles, you can't do because they don't really have any modifiers. Like they don't have anything like that. Uh, that science console does. I don't know where that thing's at in my inventory. It's probably on one of my ships. I don't know where it is. So you may be able to with that one, but I'm not sure. So that's pretty much how you do re-engineering and salvage and what that does. And then other things coming up for, nope, that's pretty much it that you guys are gonna get on March 6th. You'll get little giveaways, like for a week, so check the C-Store, I'll try to cover those. At least the first day, but remember, every if you log in every day, go check your C-Store, go check the Promotions tab, typically, is where stuff is going to be, where it says it's free. So, you can get that. Okay, now, moving on to PC, which is probably one of the cooler things. I hope this goes to Xbox, but they need to kind of figure out how that system works. PC. They are now partnering with Mixed Dimensions. That is a current link. There is a link in the description for that. It is transforming 3D printing from game print, 3D collectibles. So what they're doing is they're working with this company to allow you to create a custom 3D handcrafted starship collectible for your desk, home, and more. Almost all of over 500 playable starships will be available for print, including your personalization customs like ship names, colors, and shield skins. I do not know, but I hope you can get one of your ships with all the board crap sticking out of it. Like, don't you want that on your desk? That would be cool. Once you have your ship where you want it, you'll be directed to, oh, so you'll even be able to print the customizations you've made by using parts available for your ship at the ship tailor. Once you have your ship where you want it, you'll be directed to Mixed Dimensions Game Print website where you'll be able, you'll be offered several different purchase options. Captains can commission one of the company's master artists to hand paint and an incredibly detailed 12 inch resin high end collectible version of their starship. This is probably not going to be cheap. Their prices are not listed here. You can order a single color version or a pre-primed model, which allows you to paint the entire ship, starship yourself if you're into painting miniatures. This isn't really miniature, as it's you know, a foot long. For those of you that prefer to stick to the classics, Game Print will also offer completed models replicating 20 of Starship Star Trek Online's exclusive most popular starships. So, like, the Enterprise-D, the Odyssey, hopefully the Arbiter, but I don't know, that's the newest fun ship that everybody likes to jump all over. Hopefully like the one of the Vestas, the Scimitar, possibly, the Warbird, the Negvar, the Vakuv. We'll have more information very soon on this program with pricing details and how you can print your very own ship. In the meantime, check out the 3D printed Pathfinder below. So that's really cool, that's really detailed. Again, there's no like size comparison, but think it's, you know, 12 inches long. That's like, well, that's literally a foot. <laughs> it's about that long. I know you can view this on any size screen. It's probably not going to be the size, especially if you're watching it on a 40-inch plasma. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just looking at my keyboard. Probably not. But yeah, that's that. I'm excited for this, but again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. 
Um, if I win the lottery when it's out and I have money, I might get my best out. I might get the anoraks because that's cool. So if you guys want to check out the link and check out all these things, there's a link below. Also, like I said, a link to their actual website if you want to poke around at it. Okay, I will catch you guys next week for news and all that jazz. See what's going on near the end of February. Bye!